we're going to continue our discussion on how to use and interpret regression lines, um, especially the slope and y-intercept. And we're going to be talking about another example, number two. All right, number two, what we have here. And in number two, get a smaller line here, um, we have Michael's a runner and uses his Apple Watch to keep track of a distance and the number of calories he burns for 20 runs. Let's get a plot of y calories burned. All right, so that is our response variable. And response variable. And there is x to distance in miles shows a fairly strong, fairly strong positive linear relationship. Okay, so um, that is our explanatory. Explanatory. Ugh. All right, there, explanatory variable. And the relationship, our regression equation is this right here. It models up fairly well. So we're going to interpret the slope of the regression line. So to interpret the slope, here is our slope. And so what we know is that for every um, additional no mile, okay, um, run, run by Michael, okay, the predicted, Um, calories burned, because that's our predicted value right there. Okay, so the response variable is also our predicted. Just so we know. Predicted calories, and we're putting this in context, calories burned um, will, now because the slope is positive, will increase, and we're going to put increase by 160. All right, calories. Calories. All right, and that's what we have right there. So for every additional mile run by Michael, the predicted calories burned will increase by 160 calories. Well, that's pretty awesome. So with that, we're going to continue to move on. And we'll say, does the value of y-intercept have any meaning in this context? If so, interpret y-intercept. If not, explain why. Well, if he runs zero... All right, so essentially when x equals 0, okay, so essentially he runs um, 0 miles. So if Mike runs 0 miles, miles, the total calories burned, earned, is 20. Now, <clears throat> now, when we think about this, does that make sense? Um, and the number of calories burned, 20 miles. Well, I guess he's always going to maybe burn some, because you just burn calories just by living. So I guess this kind of makes sense. So if Mike runs zero miles, the total calories burned would just be 20 calories. And as you increase the number of miles, that would increase. So I think, yes, yes that makes sense. Um, and so we're going to interpret it this way. So if Mike runs zero miles, the total calories burned is 20 calories. Um, because that's what he would be at rest, okay, um, doing that. All right, now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to predict the number of calories burned if he runs five miles, all right, five miles. Um, and five miles, well, in order to figure out the predicted value, that's going to be that. We're going to take 20 plus 160 times five, 160 times five. So if you put this in your calculators and you figure this out, probably can maybe do it in your head as well. So you have 160 times 5 plus 20. And we're going to have, he's going to probably burn, according to this model, 120 calories. Okay, and that's our predicted amount. So finally, the next thing we have is calculate and interpret the residual if his Apple Watch said he burned 190 calories for 5 miles. Well, right here, this is the predicted amount. And if you recall, residuals equal the actual minus the predicted, okay? And so we want to calculate that residual. So our new residual is going to equal, all right, actual, which is 910, minus our predicted, which is 820, 820. okay? And so what is that difference? 910 minus 820, it's going to be 90 calories. So our residual is 90 calories. Now, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that um, the actual value 
And so what we have is we want to interpret this. So uh, we know that our actual value, the actual value um, at five miles is 90 calories more than the predicted value. Value of night, uh, predicted value, uh, predicted value. Yeah, that's what we know. So the actual value of not at five miles is 90 calories more than the predicted value um, at that same time. So, and that's what we know with residuals. Now, finally, we have our last one. It says Michael's thinking about signing up for his first marathon. So, so far, his longest run has been 10 miles. Should he use regression equation to predict how many calories he would burn if he were to run a 26.2 miles? Um, the answer is no. Okay, no. That would be extrapolation um, because a marathon, marathon is... 26.2 miles and is beyond beyond the interval interval of 20 miles miles of the data <clears throat> um, data the amount would not be um, very accurate. Okay, because um, we're assuming it's just increasing at a linear fashion, uh, which it may not be. All right, and so that's why we had. So because the 20 is beyond the actual interval of 20 miles of the data, the amount um, would not be a very accurate estimation. And so that is what we call extrapolation. All right, well, we just went through and we talked about how to interpret the slope, the y-intercept. Also, we talked about how to do residuals and also why we don't want to do extrapolation. Hope this helps you out and good luck and God bless and the rest of your problems.